Alright guys, Sparkle will be dropping shortly and I just want to cover her kit before she does. I'll give my take on her and my opinion on whether you should pick her up or not. Before we get into it, please subscribe to the channel, we'll extremely appreciate it and drop a like if you enjoyed the video. So Sparkle, as we all know, is a Quantum Harmony character and is capable of recovering skill points for all allies and increasing the ally skill point limit. Additionally, Sparkle can advance the action of a designated ally, similar to Bronya, increase her crit damage and boost her damage dealt by all allies. Kicking you off with the first trace, when using a basic attack, additionally regenerates energy. Now as simple as this trace is, it could be valuable in certain situations. Whenever it is Sparkle's turn, you do want to prioritise using a skill since it is broken. However, if you are forced into using her basic attack, somehow you ran out of skill points, you will be gaining additional energy which is pretty good considering you do want to pop her ult as often as possible. At least there is an effect from this basic attack and it's not considered as the standard useless one. The second trace would be the crit damage boost effect provided by the skill will be extended until the start of the target's next turn. Now you may overlook this trace, but it is huge for specific characters. Those characters being the ones able to take action between their initial turn and their next turn. So follow-up attack characters for example, plenty of them are able to land a follow-up attack before it is their next turn, such as Dr. Ratio, Topaz and even Jing Yuan. Specifically for Dr. Ratio, once you pop his ult, he launches two follow-up attacks before it's his turn again. So all of his follow-up attacks that already do some very good damage will be amped even more by the crit damage boost, which is amazing. And the final trace increases all allies attack, additionally increases the attack of quantum type allies based on the amount of quantum type characters in the team. So regardless of who Sparkle is placed with, they will receive an attack bonus standard. If you play Sparkle with one quantum character, the quantum characters will gain an additional attack boost. And that keeps stacking depending on how many quantum characters there are. So you would want to be running the mono quantum team to gain full effect of this trace. Hopefully there will be some more quantum characters in the future that scale off attack so they'll find this trace valuable as well. I can only see the DPS benefiting from this trace but it should be quite a nice boost for them regardless. Now as great as this trace is, just know you don't have to run the mono quantum team. Of course the most optimal way to run Sparkle would be to place her on the mono quantum team. However, Sparkle seems like she will be able to allow for quite a few team comps to be playable. Such as the imbibe to Lune hyper carry team, a follow up attack team and I'm sure players will conjure up more once she drops. Alright, Sparkle's technique. Using the technique grants all allies misdirect for a certain time. Characters with misdirect will not be detected by enemies and entering battle in the misdirect state recovers a certain number of skill points for the team. Okay, that's pretty good since you will benefit in the overworld as well as in battle. Also considering you would start the battle with now a cap of 7 skill points, however many additional skill points you gain at the start would be huge. You usually start with 3 skill points so I would see this being bumped to 4 max in my opinion. If you start with 5 that would be pretty crazy. Having just one more skill point at your disposal just allows a much stronger start as you are able to use an additional skill you wouldn't be able to before. So a pretty solid technique I must say. Sparkle's basic attack is just a standard single target that deals quantum damage. However, since it is tied in with the first trace, it has more of a use than a standard basic attack. As I did mention before, you would only want to use Sparkle's skill when it's a turn, but if you are forced to use the basic attack, you will gain more energy than usual. I believe you actually gain as much energy as a skill with her basic, so either way you regen 30 energy, which will help with getting the ult off ASAP. Moving on to the talent. While Sparkle is on the battlefield, additionally increases the max number of skill points. Whenever an ally consumes one skill point, all allies damage dealt increases. This effect can last for a certain number of turns and can stack up to a certain number of times. Firstly, we already know that increased skill point cap will be 7 skill points. Now the fact that the skill point cap increase is unconditional is just amazing. So you can be assured that cap won't be fluctuating. I guess just as long as you keep Sparkle alive, it should remain. If she runs out of HP, that limit I assume does go back down. This skill point cap increase is really going to be changing the way you play this game especially with certain characters. Needless to say, skill point dependent characters like Imbibed Lune and Ching Chui would love being with Sparkle. I'm sure Sparkle would appreciate them also since they will likely achieve max stacks on a damage increase for the team sooner than other characters as they are using more skill points in a turn in comparison. Also, one possibility this talent may lead to is dual DPS comps. Just like how Ruan Mei can enable dual DPS comps, Sparkle just might be able to just as effortlessly. I mean, you will have more skill points for the entire team to use, so two DPS characters will be able to use their skills comfortably. Also, the team is gaining a damage increase when skill points are being used, so it is a possibility that we will have to see on her release. Alright, we're going into what makes Sparkle broken territory now. Let's go. Increases crit damage of a target ally for a certain number of turns. This also causes the target's actions to be advanced forward. Again, this is tied in with the second trace that extends the crit damage boost till the start of the target's next turn, which is going to be massive. 
It's not confirmed how much of a crit damage boost Sparkle will provide, but let's say the multiplier does have some potential. Literally, any crit character is going to benefit massively from being with Sparkle as they are gaining a potentially huge crit damage boost for their turn, and if they attack again before the next turn, they're dealing even more damage. So as I mentioned earlier, follow up attack characters would definitely benefit the most from this extra trace tied in with the skill. However, one character I am interested in seeing how they interact with the skill is Sila. I am not too sure if Sila's Resurgence is considered as her next turn, so if it's not, she will be benefiting just as much as follow-up attack characters. Possibly even more, since she is a quantum character, so she will gain the additional attack boost. You are able to pop Resurgence at least twice before Sila's next turn, so Sila should be dealing some insane damage if it works just as how I imagine it. I haven't even covered the part where the target's actions are advanced forward. I can comfortably say it won't be the 100% like Bronya, as they would have just outright said it in my opinion. However, if it's something like 50%, that would still be considered good. Majority of the time, using Dance, Dance, Dance and Ulting, your allies go next and that's a 24% action advance forward at S5. So 50% for an ally would still be great. Of course, with speed tuning, you can maybe ensure the ally goes next nearly every time. Finally, the ultimate. Recovers a certain number of skill points for the team and grants all allies Cypher. 4 skill points are recovered, we already know that. For all allies with Cypher, each stack of the damage boost effect provided by Sparkle's talent additionally increases by a certain percentage, lasting for a certain number of turns. So the value of Sparkle's talent actually goes up. Let's say her talent provides a total of 8% increased damage for each stack, and there are 3 stacks for example. Now each stack will gain an additional boost by let's say 5%. So now each stack is bumped to 13% and there are 3 stacks, meaning there's a total of a 39% increase in damage for the team whenever Sparkle ults. These are numbers I've made up, so bear that in mind. However, if the numbers are similar, it just increases the chances of dual DPS teams being more viable with Sparkle. If there is a massive damage boost for the team, I wouldn't see why dual DPS teams can't be used, especially since there will be enough skill points. The 4 skill point recovery every ultimate is just going to be ridiculous too, since it throws skill point efficiency right out the window. You can use a bunch of skill points, ult with Sparkle, and you're ready to go again. Of course, for certain teams, this is going to be a lot more valuable than others. Going over the Lyco now. Increases the wearer's crit damage by 32%. Sparkle gaining crit damage would mean her crit damage boost works like Bronya, being that it scales up from her own crit damage. So you'll want to stack Sparkle with a crazy amount of crit damage to amp that skill. At the start of the battle, the wearer gains mask, lasting for 3 turns. While the wearer has mask, the wearer's allies have their crit rate increased by 10% and crit damage increased by 28%. For every skill point recovered, the wearer recovers, including skill points that exceed the limit, they gain one stack of Radiant Flame. And when the wearer has four stacks of Radiant Flame, all the stacks are removed and they gain mask again lasting for four turns. So essentially, every time Sparkle ults, you reset the crit rate and crit damage boost for four turns. So this light cone has a 100% uptime, which is amazing. I've mentioned before, just expect Sparkle's signature light cone to be the best in slot and I was not wrong. This light cone, paired with Sparkle, could enable a huge crit damage boost for her allies. Considering you would want as much crit damage as possible with Sparkle to really amp the crit damage boost from her skill, this light cone would be really hard to pass up on. That's if I am correct and this skill does scale on crit damage which is likely, otherwise I wouldn't see why the light cone provides crit damage to Sparkle. Of course, like always, you don't need to pull for signatures, they really do make the character much easier to build, but with good investment, you can afford to skip her. However, this signature tied with good investment could make Sparkle absolutely broken. There isn't another Harmony Light Cone that increases crit damage apart from the Battle Pass one, but that isn't a good Light Cone in general as it's heavily RNG based. There are plenty of other Light Cones to run on Sparkle, so you don't really need to feel forced into summoning for the signature, as good as it is. Now, do you need Sparkle? After going through her kit, she seems like a very impressive support. However, if you don't have the right units to run alongside her, you could skip her. It just really depends on your account and who you currently have. Sparkle does seem very versatile though, so we will see the full extent of who she can support effectively on her release. However, as you guys may be aware, Acheron is dropping after Sparkle, and I imagine that's the reason why a lot of people will unfortunately be skipping. As broken as Sparkle is, Acheron is just Acheron. It's just a shame Acheron is releasing right after, so it will be quite tough to skip Sparkle. Regardless, she is a crazy support, so even if you don't have the right team right now, you could plan out to pull for them later on because Sparkle seems like she will be sticking around in the meta for a very long time. With that, if you intend to pull, best of luck. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, would extremely appreciate it, and drop a like. Also, drop a comment on whether you're going to be pulling for Sparkle and why, or are you skipping? And yeah, hope to catch you guys later.